Hello, hello, everyone. This week, I am finally back in studio. So if you are watching, I hope y'all enjoy this episode. This is one that I have teased on shenanigans for a while now because one of you sent in a question asking if myself or Brock would ever have one of our exes on the podcast. And I was like, huh, that's actually not a bad idea because there's always some questions, you know, that you maybe wish you asked your ex, you maybe wanted a little more insight on. And so I figured, why not kind of start to wrap up this year, getting into some shenanigans with someone whose name you may have heard me say just a couple of times on season six of Vanderpump Rules, and he can hang up a TV quite quick, Mr. Rob Valletta. How you doing? I'm here. Are you nervous? <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> what to uh, expect, but I'm here because you asked me yeah. to be here, uh, and I finally said yes. Yeah. So um, I saw you recently did our friend Kale's podcast. I did. You didn't seem this nervous for that one. You seemed a little more relaxed in your seat and not so uptight so what is it that makes you a little on edge here right now is it seeing me or is it you just don't know what i'm going to ask you because i sent you like 20 questions no no i think i think you know the uh, and and this is always kind of the same thing i think it's like i don't know what to expect mm -hmm. with kale and that podcast it's about what i'm really passionate right now about self-help men helping men out um really encouraging each other to see how like to work on the process of becoming the better self, you know? Yeah. And, and so that was a really easy conversation for me because it's that, you know, I think that, um, I do, I mean, I think I've always been slightly nervous around not you because I know you, like I know you to your core. Yeah. But I think the world that surrounds you has always been slightly nervous for myself right because i can't control it uh -huh. i can't i can't um that's it and and so i think that's that's the uh that's the difference gotcha yeah okay well i do want to get into some of that stuff as well that you mentioned it's mm -hmm. not going to be all based on us or vanderpump rules or any of that of course a lot of questions that came in yeah. are based around that but i thought we could just lighten the mood and mm -hmm. start with a little game called was i crazy are you down what was i crazy yes yeah i'm down okay yeah. so one night i was sitting at home and i just had this idea i was like if i ever do and this was before i had even asked you to do the podcast i was thinking what if i did have rob on the podcast what if we played a game called was I crazy and I thought of these I don't even know how many maybe like 10 11 scenarios and I just want you to know I will not be offended at all if you say yes you were crazy because there's no way that I wasn't crazy in all of these things yep you feel oh I feel you okay yeah, yeah so question numero uno was I crazy that I thought you did actually love me were you crazy that I thought no because I did love you okay so no yeah okay and 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 here's the thing mm -hmm. yeah continue no no I, I, was like, I, I was like I, and I always tell that I think I've always talked about like yeah I love Sheena to death I wouldn't be here if I didn't love you yeah well I mean obviously a different type of love now 100%, 100% but yes and one I now see which I want to get into more when we talk about love languages is how you're better at expressing those feelings now yeah and for that proud of you therapy dog please come yes <laughs> we have I was gonna say our <laughs> dog his dog Frankie is here joining us on the yeah. podcast and oh my gosh I miss this dog this is the dog I've bonded with the most other than my mm. own dog in my life there you go sorry about that yeah your therapy dog she's she my can. therapy she's my she's, she's my headphones <laughs> she's for your the day. safe space you have headphones i have my therapy perfect dog. Yeah. okay next one and this is one that i've always wondered hmm. and never asked you so i'm very curious about your answer was i crazy or did you play songs that had lyrics 
to express how you were feeling because you couldn't express it in your own words. Thousand percent. Okay. I think we'll get into that later. Why? Um, but a thousand percent, a, a large way of my communication was music, was things, because I didn't do the work on myself enough to be able to properly communicate. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt there, you know, I had, I had ways that I did, and music was 100%. And so, yeah, that I, I, there's definitely songs that I, you know, music. Sam Cooke, always, What a Wonderful World. Songs will always remind Lainey, you of if you certain see her. places in your life mm -hmm. and certain people. Yeah. And I feel like that's the power of music. And I feel 100%. Like, and I feel like, you know, yeah, there's songs I hear, and I always like, eh, yep, yep, she, she. Yep. And, that, and so, yeah, no, you're not crazy. Yeah, okay. I always wondered that because I'm like, is he playing this song right now because he wants me to listen to the words or am I just reading into this and it's a coincidence? No. So I was not crazy. Good to know. Was it crazy to believe that you never made out with the hostess at Toka Madeira without even asking? I just believed that you never did that. Was I crazy or no. did you make out with her? No, because I think you know me well enough to know that. Yeah. Like, no. And that, and that, We'll get into that later, but no, you're not crazy. <laughs> okay. Was I crazy that I never felt like you were using me to be on the show? Never felt like you were crazy. You know what the funny thing is about that? I felt that wasn't even a conversation mm -hmm. between our dialogues in our life and, and yours and my relationship until our relationship started deteriorating. Mm-hmm. Um, not because of you, but we'll get into that later. Uh, but then everybody else was saying, oh, well, then he's doing this because of that. And I felt like once like the La La's and everybody was like, oh, he's using you. Then that became a story and a narrative that you started using. Yeah. even um, And so between the, between our personal relationship, that was never, my intent was never to do that. We all know the conversations I had before the show. Mm hmm. Um, my reluctancy before the show, the things that I was like saying, how I, uh, you know, but I made that choice to do that for you. Yeah. And, and, and so, um, it, I think, I think that was one of the biggest things that actually affected me after we broke up, um, was that narrative becoming something that was so impactful into you from what people were saying, because that, that hurt my feelings. It hurt my feelings. Cause I was like, okay. And I just stayed quiet. I didn't want to ever fight that. Um, so um, I don't think you're necessarily crazy or not so crazy. I can 100% see that how that narrative could be spun that way. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like there are benefits of being on your show with Instagram followers and this and that. Does that lead to anything in your life that's impactful? No, it is not real. It's not a real thing. Having followers doesn't change any benefit of your life. Um, well, it could on social media deals, but <laughs> but I don't. But I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. Go for them. We're trying. And 100, you yeah. do. And you and that. And no, because you did. You got to 100k in our I did. relationship. 100 because of yeah. Let's and you're still here. there. All these people still follow you. You know. Yeah. No. Yeah. One of the questions that came in was from Jowd underscore and said, "How did you feel about the narrative that you wanted to be on VPR more than you put off?" It. I mean. How did I feel about the narrative of wanting everyone thinking, no, he actually does want to be on the show because there were times on the show mm -hmm. where, you know, when we had a dinner party and invited Tom and Ariana over and it was like, I don't want to film, but hey, come into my house and let me show off everything. Come to Big Bear, come on my boat. And so I know that you were doing those things for me because it was a part of my job and it was what was required, but my personal relationships, but it came across is like you acting like you didn't want to be on the show when secretly you're like no no let me show off how cool i am well i think that's also part of two of like if i was going to be on the show back then i still had my ego involved with all my decisions yeah and my ego was dictating how i wanted people to see me mm -hmm. as compared to how i wish i really relate is how people saw how i treated you mm -hmm. and i and that was that was my own fault yeah, I, I take accountability on that. Like I was operating in all ego. I was operating in how that and and that's my biggest regret with doing the show is that I um, never operated on how I don't think I we really showcased our relationship. No, way, we just showcased that, my half of it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, and, and there was a large reason for that. 
Mm-hmm. And it took a while for me to figure out what um, and why. But yeah, so, you know, I think how I was I portrayed, I was portrayed how I wanted to be portrayed at that moment, which was based off my ego, which is stupid. You shouldn't never do anything based off your ego, but that's, um, that is what it is. I can't take that back. Yeah. So kind of along those lines, was I crazy with how much I'd brag about you hanging a TV in under seven minutes? Yeah, uh, you're crazy <laughs> because I could do it in six. Oh and my so you, God! No, he we, didn't. Hundred, I can. T- I am handy. Yeah, I'm handy. But in all fairness, the framework was already on the wall. So well, tomato, tomato. I know. Hey, in retrospect, how many other TVs have my, that TV still standing? Just Is saying, it? It's still. You're there. not in that house anymore. <laughs> how do you saying, know? <laughs> I'm just saying. I know my work. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do good work. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yes. Yes. We've got one for yes, she was crazy, yes, and was I crazy. agree with you. Yeah. Cringe. She was crazy. Did you watch back any of that season? I tried not to. I. I it's impossible not to see that. Right. Now. That was still to this day. People comment, seven minute man. Hmm. I would much rather be a seven minute <laughs> man than a one minute man, but at least seven minutes is is it, it it's pretty funny how that turned into such a thing. Oh my god, did yeah. it? You know, Lala even named one of her lip glosses seven seconds because she thought that's what it was. And everyone was like, is this supposed to be a play on Sheena and Raw? Because it was seven minutes. (laughs) So fail there. Give them Lala. (laughs) Okay. Was I crazy in feeling like when we got together that I guess you could kind of call it a second time because we did date, what, 15 years ago? It wasn't as serious. You were never my boyfriend, but there was something there. Was I crazy in feeling like this second time around, like there was unfinished business? Or did you feel that way as well? No, that's why we got back together. I mean, I think that, you know, once again, at that place in my life, like that's what I was looking for. I was still looking for someone like you. And the interesting thing uh, is when we got back together, you also you changed obviously because you were married for a long time. Mm-hmm. You changed, and and so there was unfinished business, and that was there were already a massive connection. You and me had an we've always had a, just a, a great connection with each other, um, and so I think when we got back together, you know this is actually a funny story, and a lot of people don't know this is you were the very first and only girl up until that point that I that rejected me. This is a true story. I do remember that. Yeah, and 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 I asked you on a date. As he came, I was like, "Is it good?" You're like, "Nope." How did that do for your ego? Well, I think at that point in my life, I was operating out of all ego. Yeah, we we're Everything what twenty four. You were, and I 25? was like twenty one. Yeah, yeah twenty two, we twenty five. We were really young. Kids. And you were the first person. You know, obviously, I was in relationships and this, and I thought yeah. I was the big cool guy in town at that point. And I asked you on a date, and. I remember you walked out. You were at where you're on uh, Santa Monica Boulevard out there, and you walked out in a little black dress. And I walked out. I was like, "Hey, I'm taking you on a date." And you're like, "No, you're not." <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm gonna take you on a date." And you're like, "No, you're not." And do you remember? <laughs> do you remember <laughs> the next time of how I actually took you on a date? Fucking Disneyland. No. Do you remember me actually finally accepting and saying yes to how we actually got on a date? No. Oh. Refresh my memory. No. Wait, no. what? No, I have a good story for you, but we're not. No. Uh, next question. No, no. No, it's a good question. It's a good question. It's good. It was a good one. You had a good, you had a very good thing. We'll talk about it later, though. It was really good. It was very clever. Very clever. What did I say? Like, if you take me on a date, we're doing what I want to do? No. Hmm. If you don't remember, it must not be important to me. No, I don't remember. <laughs> But first date was Disneyland. I it was. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Next question. whatever happened in between, I don't know. It's a mystery to all of us. Yep. Except you. Because mm-hmm. you remember. Because I remember. <laughs> yeah. Was I crazy in agreeing to name a future daughter Madison, even though TBH didn't really like that name? You didn't like the name? I'm Madison, not my top names for no offense to any yeah. Madisons out there. I would have yeah. changed it to Maddie for me because I think Maddie's cute. But um, no, I always wanted to name a daughter either Reagan or Summer or Jameson. I liked Jackson. I liked boy names for girls. I liked Ryan. There were so many names like Madison was never in my wheelhouse of names. I mean, at the end of the day, in, when you're in love and 
think conversations it's like you, it it's a different dialogue so are you crazy or not crazy it's a, i think that's like a, not a valid question follow-up question well i think when you're in love you don't you you know if someone's like i like the name plant mm-hmm. oh i love plant too wow <laughs> i'm just saying you know what i'm saying though it's like that's, yeah when you're in love it's like you know it it doesn't matter. I think sometimes I think you always just want to work with your partner and collaborate to come up with those things. So no, you're not crazy. Okay. Um, also, maybe yes, you were crazy in love maybe, maybe, at the time. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Follow up question. Will you still name a daughter Madison? Mm-mm. No. Madison nope. Marie Parks Valletta is never coming into this world, is she? Nope. Okay. Was I crazy? Or this is another one that this one I actually thought of recently. Was I crazy to think that you judged me for how much weed I used to smoke back in the day? No, or did you judge me? No, you're not crazy. You just know I didn't like that. Yeah. I, I, I didn't love someone smoking weed every single day because it wasn't who I was. Yeah. And I didn't judge you. And, and I mean, it's like, it's weird because you know me. I'm like, I'm not going to like say it out loud. Part mm-hmm. of my not learning how to communicate properly as yeah. in my younger youth. Um, younger youth. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, he's in his forties uh, now, people. Yeah, uh, no, I, I didn't know how to communicate properly. That that was something that doesn't work for me. But I'm never going to tell you not to do something. I'm never going to tell you to stop doing something because that's who you are. Yeah. Um, but no, you're not crazy. I didn't love it. Um, I can't function on weed, and so well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just go into my own head and I'm my own worst enemy. And yeah. So I just doesn't work for me. But for you, that's a that's a that's how you you know you can do yeah. it, you can operate, and so I'm never gonna judge. But it just yeah, you're not crazy. Because I feel like that is one thing. I mean, there's a few, but I feel like that was one thing that's had like a lasting effect on me since our relationship. Is if I want to smoke weed during the day since we had broke up, if I want to have a drink during the day, I know I don't have an addictive personality, and I know that I don't have a problem with marijuana or alcohol mm-hmm. ever in my life. But there are times over the past five years where if I want to smoke weed during the day or if I want to, you know, crack open a can of whatever during the day, then I'm like, is he going to judge me? Is she going to judge me? So that is one thing that I always wondered, like, why you just never had that open conversation with me. I think that is there's so much of that. I don't think I had open conversations about a lot of things. That's true. We'll get into that. Yeah. You know. Last one. Was I crazy or did we not go look at a house together? 100%. Okay. Because yeah. everyone's like, you're crazy. Like, none of this no, is. I'm in, like, was no, in, literally, he in, took me to look at a listing. It was in Studio City. Yeah. Uh, north of the 101, two story little white house. I do remember the backyard. With a weird, of it. creepy attic. Yeah. Super like, and, and no, we looked at it. I mean, part of, the, part of that too is, is, one, I always like looking at real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, and and two, you know, I think we were in a place of our relationship. That was, I think that was right before Vanderpump. It was really right. early on. It was yeah. like January, February. It was like right like before we were Vander- brand new. It wasn't before the show started. Um, and it's like the thing, I already knew you. Like we already had a history. It wasn't yeah. like I was like starting fresh with you again and be like, Oh, I met you a month ago and like, and then gaslight you into like getting a house. Like I knew you, I, you know, in mm-hmm. my brain, when you know, you know, and there's certain people like at that time, I was like, yeah, hey, I mean, whatever, like that could be a thing. Um, but yeah, you are not crazy. Okay. All right. There was a question that came in from JC Francine and said, what did you learn about gaslighting from how you treated Sheena on VPR? What did I learn about gaslighting? Yeah. Do you think that you... I think that's a very interesting question because I don't think anybody learns anything about themselves until they do the work mm-hmm. and and understands how, how and why they are operating um, and doing whatever they do. Um, do, I, do I think there was a lot of things that happened in our relationship that I could have fixed if i would have done the work earlier Mm -hmm. thousand percent you know so was i gaslighting was this i was operating at the best of my ability at that moment in time Mm -hmm. with what i with what worked for me and didn't work with me with how i treated everything in life Mm -hmm. how i treated how i treated you 
at that period of my life was a response to my past traumas, how mm-hmm. I grew up, things that hurt me. And so I reacted to you in certain ways based off all those things. And I never did the work to understand um, <laughs> how not to gaslight you or this, whoever wants to call it. I just didn't do the work. Mm-hmm. And so you're dealing with someone who's immature. Yeah. Emotionally, immature communication-wise, immature as a man. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, if they want to call it gaslighting, sure, they can call it whatever you want. But I'm sure I did a lot of things that um, – to a lot of people yeah. that, that weren't – that were hurtful. And, 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 it's, and it sucks because, you know, I don't ever want to hurt you. I don't ever want to hurt you. You're an awesome human. You're, Thank you. No, you are. You're an awesome human. And, and, and I appreciate – I wouldn't be here yeah. if I didn't – think you were an awesome human yeah um so um to answer your question do i i look back i'm like i i can't look back and change anything i could just move forward and say okay hey like expect better yeah you know well i do love that you've been doing the work you know we've been able to come back to a friendship and two things i want to thank you for one for being here and doing this podcast today because i know this is not like your super comfortableness being here but i do appreciate it because i do think this is interesting to you know when do you sit down with your ex in front of a microphone and two cameras and a producer you well, know in our world a lot i mean but. in mine yeah. yes <laughs> in, but in your world a lot yeah but on vanderpump rules whenever i've broken up with someone or they've broken up with me in our case um, you don't really, I don't have those interactions anymore on camera. Whereas, you know, James and Raquel, Tom and Katie, Tom and Kristen, everyone, they've all had to still film with their exes. I've had the luxury of, well, we're not together anymore. You're not on the show. Mm-hmm. So this I know doesn't make you super comfortable, but thank you for being here. And also it's like Ariana Grande's song. Thank you. Next. Like I am very thankful to our time together, but mm-hmm. also how, abruptly and hurtful it ended Mm -hmm. because at the time I mean hindsight's 2020 at the time I was broken you Mm -hmm. knew this it forced me to move to another state that job to this day is still one of the best things I've done in my life like I never knew that I wanted to get back on stage and perform and like you were there opening night you came you supported the show Mm -hmm. Moving to Las Vegas, headlining a show on the Strip was a dream I never could have imagined and never would have happened had you not broken up with me the way you did because I ended up in Vegas on a girl's trip trying to drink away my sorrows at the Sex Tips show with my friends Jay and Kendra and they were like, you should audition, which you also helped me put on tape. And I got that job because of all of this. It was hard I got in therapy I had to do a lot of work to get over the breakup because I felt like I never processed the divorce and then when you broke up with me it was just like oh wow now I have like two heartbreaks at one time but now fast forward five years I feel like that made me so much stronger as a person and I do feel like there's this one song um it's like I think it's like called passenger something but it's like if you love her let her go and I feel like with both you and Shay that you both did love me and let me go and I didn't see that at the time because I was so hurt but in hindsight I'm like oh my god if I wouldn't have gotten divorced then I wouldn't have had this I wouldn't have had that and so I just wanted to say thank you and And, and next and here's Brock and and, yeah yeah and I'm sorry you know, I know. truly, like, I, I am sorry I, if I ever hurt you, you know, I, and I mean that. Like, yeah. And I said it over and over again. You are a, you're a really good human. And, and I know, and I know a lot of stuff and a lot of things um, are hard in your world specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I did my best to the best of my ability at that time to constantly, even after we broke up, to be there for you to support you on your show, to support you going to Vegas, even though going to Vegas selfishly would mean I would lose you more as a friend. Mm -hmm. I knew that. And when I was helping you do the audition, in my brain, I was like, if she gets this, you're losing her more. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was better for you because I was not in that place. Um, You know, and and it was, it's really interesting in retrospect to look how our relationship went awry uh 
and how I ended up in that place, you know, and I never communicated that with you. I never communicated how did I get in that place with us mm -hmm. because I was a really shitty communicator. Yeah. And, and the worst. The worst. Um, you know, so, so no, but, and, and I've told you that before and we know that. And, and, and I, and I, um, I'm sorry you went through all that hurt. That's it, the feeling, it, the, the broken feeling is the absolute worst. Yeah. It's but not you fun. Have, you have to sometimes break. And I'm not saying I had to break you. And, I, and that's what I'm saying. You sometimes have to break to become the best version of yourself if you choose to do that. Yeah. You and have I, choices. that is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm genuinely in the best place in my life. I feel like I've met my perfect match mm -hmm. with Brock. I have a beautiful daughter now. And I wouldn't have any of this had you not hurt me. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I am thankful now, years later, that yeah. we're able to maintain a friendship and that, you know, we are where we're at in life. So moving on. There was a psychic I saw after we broke up. And I don't know that I've ever fully told you this story. I remember telling your mom and telling your sister. And she told me, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, that she believes that you and I are it's either karmic or cosmic. I think it's karmic. Soulmates. Do you believe in soulmates? That is a very tough question to ask me right now. Okay. Um, I don't know if my heart's in a place to the hopeless romantic in me. Mm -hmm. I'm a massive hopeless romantic. And I lost a piece of that. And there's a part of me that wants to say yes because I believe in that. Mm -hmm. And there's another part of me that is just so damn scared of love that I don't know if I... I don't know. So a karmic soulmate. I think I had said cosmic before and then all these people Cos are writing and they're like, it's karmic. I'm like, whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? This is a person who in each lifetime, I don't know if you believe in past lives or not, but supposedly we met in a past life. I did something that really hurt you in the past life. Don't know what it was, but that hurt that I caused you in our past life transferred over into this lifetime and was a reason why you struggled even more with me specifically in communicating. Well, I took that question completely wrong. Wow. Okay. And yeah, it, thank you for clarifying because so ask me the question again. Sorry. Do you believe in soulmates? There are different types of soulmates. Yeah. Not all mean love. Do I believe partner, in actual soulmates? soulmates? Yes, I believe in soulmates. Okay. Do I believe in karmic, did you say? So a karmic soulmate is someone who is brought into your life in each lifetime to teach you a lesson, but not necessarily to be a life partner. Uh, no, I don't believe in that. I, I, I believe that. I believe we, we all have our own life. God, God sets us up in these situations and in life and God gives us opportunities. I, I go much more to the God route than I do that that route yeah. personally mm -hmm. but that's me yeah yeah okay just thought yeah. i'd share that with you and at the time but if, but if it makes you feel better that you hurt me previously in a past life i take it <laughs> right yes you did oh that, <laughs> our other life when we were both butterflies you you clipped my wing yeah but at the time i was like he better not find me in my next life <laughs> fuck this guy <laughs> this, this dies in this lifetime oh, but gosh. i was like that's interesting because i do feel like and she said another thing she said which made me believe this was she said that the lesson you were trying to teach me in this lifetime was to put myself first because you knew I never did that. Mm -hmm. And me getting the job in Vegas, moving to Vegas, doing all of that, that was really putting myself in my career first for the first time. So I was like, wait, okay, so he's here to teach me this lesson, but not necessarily to be my life partner. And that was a hard pill to swallow at the time. But now I'm like, huh, maybe. Yeah. And I told you that all the time. I was like, you do put everybody else first. Yeah. And I was trying to force you to put you first for a second. And you did. And, and I did. Yeah. I mean, you even, we've had conversations and I remember vividly conversations like, I will leave this show potentially for you. I will do oh, this yeah. for you. And I said, no. Oh yeah. I was ready to walk away. And I said, stop. Yeah. Because this is not about. Crazy. No, <laughs> it, it's not, no, you're not crazy. I just know you so well. Yeah. And I, and I was like, you have to stop doing that. Like, 
I had to, it was in a weird way, I had to be selfish for you to like try to get you to be selfish for you in certain ways, not necessarily in our relationship, but in you in life. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you give your shirt off the back to everybody. You are number one friend to everybody and whatever that show portrays you in certain ways is how they want to portray you, but you are one of the kindest, nicest people to the people in your world I know. Thank you. No, you are. And, and I, and to a fault. Mm-hmm. And, and, and at times I, I remember that conversation. It's like, that's why I said, going back to Vegas thing, I wanted you to get Vegas for you. Yeah. Not for me selfishly if I was running, you know, but that's, a, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Vegas was the shit that was. that literally was life changing for me. It gave me like a confidence boost back c- coming back to L.A. after doing a show like that. It was just the best time in my life. So thank you for helping with that and forcing me to put myself first. Good. OK, speaking Good of first, mm. Jace underscore son wants to know what was it like meeting Brock for the first time? This is also a story I've told on the podcast about running into you at a Bryce Vine show down in San Diego. We were with your cousin. Well, you were standing there with your cousin and then Brock and I walked up. I want to know from your perspective what that was like. Well, at that time, also, I was with someone else. Yeah. Um, and seeing you with Brock for the first time, like, it's weird, you know. I think it's always weird when you see an ex with their new partner. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got it instantly. Like I know you well enough, and I met Brock quickly enough. And I one thing as as kind of being super sensitive to who people are and quickly seeing them really quickly is, um, I kind of got it. Yeah, I understood your two energies are two giant burning flames just <laughs> going full steam ahead at 160 miles an hour very true and, and i remember i remember saying to my cousin um and to my girlfriend at the time i was like oh yeah that's it she's good yeah it's like she's good she found that's perfect for her yeah and there's always those weird feelings ish but at the end of the day like if you're happy i'm happy for you yeah and that then that and that trumps any sort of like weird weird feelings you have outside of that do you remember dropping your drink i do yeah. did you drop it because you were nervous or uncomfortable or did you just like end up being clumsy in that moment probably a mixture of all all of it you know me it's like it's so funny <laughs> i'm on because i'm on camera all the time i know and, i know that's what's so like, like but I, it's different scripted it's, is different I'm because you're not you're yeah. you but you're you as a host and you have a exactly. script exactly I know what I have to get to in my world. And so I am so comfortable and so open. I can talk to anybody. And it's like in you, <laughs> but you, <laughs> specifically you, are like my slight kryptonite uh-huh. in um, cool, Ooh. self-cool. Like, okay. like I, I become a nerd and I drop my drink or I do this or I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, I don't know what to say. I'm like... And, and it took me a while to realize what that was. Mm-hmm. It took me a, real, a long time to realize, why is it that I have that with you? Um, and, unf- and, unf- and, and positively and, and, and unfortunately, it was part of the reason why I realized after I did a lot of work, I realized like that was also the main reason why we broke up, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, which was, and I've said this before, I said it previously, it was like, I don't feel safe. Yeah. No, I know. And, the, and, and I mean, I, the reality I, world isn't a safe place for anybody. No, it's harsh. Yeah. Like it is. You have to have the most thick skin in the world because actors, hosts, mm-hmm. even athletes to an extent can hide behind their craft. Yeah. You can hide behind it. I host a show about homes. Here's the homes. I'm hiding behind it. Right. My personality. You get it. In your world, it's you. Yeah. To an extent. It's you who they think you are told by right. producers. Yeah. Um, and that's a very, you know, that was that was always my biggest concern of, about doing the show with you was that I was just like, oh, gosh, I, don't, I can't control this. And yeah, no editing control. No. And I'm used to having editing control. I know. And so on all my shows, I sound like a 
idiot. I'm like, do do do, and like, oh, cut, moving on, and that's like, yeah. And to or you me, make it part of your shtick, or you make it part of my shtick, right? Um, but with your world, that was always my fear, and that's why I always I think you pull out that nervous kid in me. It's true. No, you do because that that that's that's not how we operate. We operate in like these phases of life where like I was that nervous kid who's always scared. Mm-hmm. Like in middle school, I was always picked on. I was mm-hmm. always beat up, you know. And and so, in a weird way, doing this show reminded me of what it was like to get picked on. Tell in middle me school. about it. And and Literally, that that's and that it. operates in uh-huh. a lot of fear. Yeah. And that's how we operate in life. Is like we go through these things in life, and then we how do we how do we deal with it? Mm-hmm. And and so I think when you. Um, when you understand that, understand that from that perspective, it's like I always get nervous around you, but it's not you. Yeah, it's them. Uh huh. It's the it's the people who like. Oh, he said it this way. He said it that way. I'm like, yeah, oh, shit. Like, no, there's no right answer. There's yeah. no right answer. And then I realized I don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. I have two people. I need to. I need to get it. You know, happy. Yeah. God. Yeah. And that person, when you look in the mirror and go, I like myself. For sure. And that takes a lot of work. Definitely. And you have done a lot of work. Was I know you've been in therapy for the past how many years, but were you ever in therapy prior to our relationship or is this something that you've done newer and later in life? I haven't done therapy ever up until a year ago. Okay. Um, I I just kind of was like, I'm, I'm smart. I can highly over process things. Mm-hmm. I can always work around it. Very analytical. I'm like, oh, I can work around it. I got it. I can always figure it out. Life always works out. Mm-hmm. And in general, like I have that mindset, life yeah. always works out good for me and it always does work out good for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it was until I actually like broke. I had my breaking point, um, which wasn't, you know, with us. I had my breaking point in a different situation and then I just said, okay, enough's enough. What's the common denominator in all this? And it's me. Mm-hmm. And how do I fix? Like, I'm tired of this. Yeah. I'm tired of our situation was very different because it was, it wasn't, we didn't break up because our relationship. Right. It wasn't like someone cheated or what, was, our relationship was yeah. fine. Like we broke up because of me. Yeah. Um, I, I know. During a you're like, fantasy football draft. No, we broke up way before that. In your head? Yeah. Oh, shit. I wasn't there for that. <laughs> I I felt the pulling away from the beginning of season six when I had to call you and tell you there was a rumor that you cheated on me. I felt the distance for the remainder of our relationship. I just tried to cover it with drones and iPads and whatever I could buy you know- <laughs> for you to just be like, it's OK, but it's OK. No, no, you you are. And I, and I don't think I ever fully said this but thank you you know you had my back so hard yeah you did yeah and and that's why i'm on the well that's what you do when you're in a relationship i mean yeah no you you should 100 percent. and and i wasn't fair to you yeah because i remember that day you called and you said hey this token madera thing happened i was sitting in the car with jake Mm -hmm. and you called me and i was on speakerphone and jake let me hear and you, co- you, you, you said, Hey, did you do this? And I said, huh? You know, did you do this? And I just remember like, you know, that it's like that your heart drops and like, I, I broke in a weird way where it took me back to so much things and, and my trauma from like being a kid and my, you know, my dad and this, it was like, it's always like my mom against the world and my mom and I against the world. And mm-hmm. we do that. So when my, experiences with trauma are like something bad's really going to happen right now. You need to wall up and you need to protect yourself and you need to go away. And at that moment I should have said, Hey, she, I don't feel safe. I didn't communicate with you. I was like, I Mm -hmm. don't feel safe. Yeah. That's all it was. I don't feel safe because now your world is going to be, he's a piece of shit. He's Mm -hmm. a bad guy. He's going to go eat. And that was my, my, my processing, my analytical processing was like all these things down the road. The reality is the show doesn't play that way. The show plays like everybody's cheating on everybody and everybody's this and that and that. And in retrospect, I wish I would have done one of two things. Said, hey, I don't feel safe and I cannot be in this situation with you anymore. And I, and I have to either end this now. Mm-hmm. 
but I was afraid that if I broke up with you on camera at that moment or took a break or took whatever it is that I needed to communicate with you deeply that I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. I should have done that one too. Or secondly, he said, fuck it. I'm going to show the world how much I do actually care. That and was what I, I was hoping. Yeah. And, and you know what? What you what you got was a person who's pushing farther away from you. Yeah. From that moment. And you're pushing harder to protect me. And unfortunately, it made the, the way they, the producers played it was it made you look like you were hyper obsessed with me. You were protecting someone who was fucking scared to be in that dynamic. Yeah. Not scared to be with you. And yeah. I think that's what the world doesn't understand is like. Putting your your world out there in front of millions of people is scary. Yeah. Especially when you can't control the narrative of how that is. I remember many nights you and me just laying in bed talking about us, and I was quiet and I was and I couldn't I couldn't communicate how like I don't I don't I don't I don't know what they're gonna say about me. I don't know this. I just knew you were doing everything in your power to protect me. Yeah. And and I thank you so much for that. And in retrospect, like I have so much respect for you, for, um protecting your partner you you do that so well you do that with brock you do that in your relationships and and it's a um um no it's what it's one of the th it's one of your qualities that i love so much about you as a person and i take that and say okay how can i do that in my relationships i learned that mm -hmm. from you i tried to learn that from you it's like how can i um yeah how do you think you've evolved as a man when it comes to vulnerability because i do think you're better at expressing how you feel do you chalk that up to therapy or how do you feel you've evolved in that sense um it's like you said you have to sometimes break you have to want to fix something mm -hmm. a lot of men who have access, a lot of men who have make money, a lot of men, and a lot of people don't talk about this, which is how do I, um, how do I break patterns and how do I make it in life? How do I do this? I mean, at the end of the day, we are our own worst enemies. The voices in our heads are the things that drive us crazy, literally. Mm -hmm. um, you know? suicide these thoughts are all things that we constantly fight and battle and thoughts and and, and with twitch going it's just a yeah. perfect example of like i had to break so bad it's okay safe space i promise Okay. Oh, okay. Frankie, your dad needs you. Call your dad. Therapy dog. All right, here we go. Um. Call your dad. You know, I I I got to this place that you sometimes you you have to break so bad that you're like I'm tired of finding myself in the same situations over and over again, regardless of how much I love or no matter how much I, energy I put into it. And then there's always that common denominator. It's me. What am I doing? And, you know, perfect example. In our relationship, there was hurt, that potential hurt that came in. I walled off and I backed away. And I didn't love anybody more than myself for the longest time. Mm hmm I was selfish. Mm -hmm. I was so selfish that I put me before everybody because that's what Hurt told me to do. Hurt's like, well, if you care about yourself and you protect yourself, no one's going to hurt you. And then for the first time after us, I was in a relationship and I put, and then I was put in a situation where I put, I let, I finally was like, I'm going to put someone else first. And probably because there was kids involved. Mm -hmm. And it was weird because my stepdad raised me since I was like five. And I was put in a situation where the kids were five and seven. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's me. And I 
for whatever reason, dropped my, my walls and said, I'm all in. Mm-hmm. I'm all in. And I became that version that I was like, I look up to my, my stepdad. He's an amazing human. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to be that version. The bad part of that, of me being all in, was I was still dealing with past bad habits. Mm-hmm. I was still dealing with things that I still picked up over the last, you know, 30 years of, of relationships in L.A. and this and that and ego. And, and so I constantly was battling with all that stuff. So, I, you know, I think to answer your question is like I had to I had and when that ended, I had I had to that relationship. Ended, I, I had to sit down and say, I'm so tired of hurting. I'm tired of hurting other people. And I take accountability for hurting other people. Um. And I don't want to hurt anybody else. I don't want to hurt. I want to have a successful relationship. I want to have kids. I want to live uh, a life where I can communicate. Hey, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm this. Hey, I'm that. And and I think that every single person has to make that choice for themselves. And a lot of people out there may never get there. Life just works out. And you may never have to get to that point. But if you find yourself spiraling and you find yourself in bad situations, if you find yourself... In, the, in places where you're thinking about suicide or you're thinking about uh, why does this not work? And I'm not talking about just relationships. I'm not talking about work. I'm mm-hmm. talking about in your professional life. Yeah. At the end of the day, the only person that's going to make it you better, work better, is you. You have to do it. No one's going to do it for you. And you can cover it with drinking. Mm-hmm. You can cover it with doing drugs. You can cover it with adrenaline highs or this or that to mask the fact that you're fucking scared of shit. Um, because none of us really know what the hell we're freaking doing. Yeah. But that's when I leaned on God as more than ever. And I leaned on third, you know, my, uh, therapist and, and I did a lot of work with EMDR, um, which is like going through my past stuff. And luckily I don't have a bunch of bad trauma in my past, Yeah. but it, it has me to a point where, yeah, I can cry. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever cried very often. I don't think you could force me to cry. Yeah, I don't think I ever saw you cry. No, I, didn't, I don't think I cried for f- 14, 15 years. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Because That's a lot of built up internal stuff, I feel like. It's it, good to cry. It is. It is if, if you're vulnerable enough to cry. Right. You know, so, yeah, I can cry. I'm like, I'm, you know, what are they going to say? Yeah. Like old softy. <laughs> I'm going to be that dad. In the movies, that is like crying at Land Before Time, and if for all of you out there, Land Before Time was a movie made before you were born. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it was like it, uh, the kid movie. I'm gonna be crying in Disney movies for oh, yeah. sure, and I know that about myself. Though, but, but that's like, okay. But that's great, and it's yeah. amazing. But as a as society right now, it tells us it's not always okay to cry. It's not always okay to be this vulnerable. You have to be masculine. You have to. Here's the thing: I'm a man. I will fix up everything. I will protect you. I will do everything. And, and at the same time, it's, it's that place where I think you really become a true man when you can be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that's something that needs to be talked about more, too, especially, like you said, with Twitch passing recently. Men's mental health and men expressing their emotions and feelings. It's like there's such this stigma that you just have to be this strong man all the time. And no, you're a human. You have feelings just like us women do. Like, why is it not okay for a man to cry? Yeah. I mean, why is it not okay for a man to talk about his fears, his Mm -hmm. this? It's incredibly challenging to um, always have to feel like you have to be alpha. Mm -hmm. It's got to be exhausting. Yeah, it's, it's it's exhausting. It's scary. I mean, there's so many men out there who are 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 constantly getting pumped in Instagram and social media. Mm-hmm. A real man does this. A real man has this oh, boat, boat, yeah, yachts. This. Yeah. A real man makes the money and like you know what? Yeah, you know what a real man does? A real man protects and provides for his family mm-hmm. and for his and the people that he cares about. Mm-hmm. And and that protection and providing might always be money. Yeah. It might not always be money. It's like what's your worth? My worth is who I am. My this is my worth. No, that's so you know, true. So, um, I think it changes and I think it just especially needs to be a topic that, that more people need to communicate with and surround yourself with friends who believe that and lift you up on that and, and support that. Mm-hmm. But speaking of 
money. I want to talk about the company that you have built, which has become so successful. Is this the same company you were working on when we were filming Vanderpump Rules? Tell me about the travel shows and just everything you're working on. And then I want to talk about your book. Um, so this company is not the same company that when we were together I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, I launched this company uh, three years ago. Four of us on a little WeWork, like the little engine that could, like we got this. <laughs> we have an idea. Yeah. Um, the comp, you know, and and, and it's all it it's all based off the mindset of uh, what our core values are as far as like you know making it in life. Mm -hmm. um, making it is not fame, accolades, or fortune. Those are a byproduct of the most simple thing of having an idea, and actually making it come to fruition and doing the work to making it. So like. It is real. What what have what have you made? Oh, here it is. I can show it to you. It is a thing. Making it is a, an actual tangible mm -hmm. thing, and and it's the mindset of we want to go make it. Let's go make it. So let's go make it. And I'm gonna make it over. And I'm gonna make it over. And I'm gonna make it over again. Um, and my dream and passion has always been to be in the entertainment industry. And travel, that's always my dream. Yeah. And then how can I merge the two worlds? Was to create a company that produces travel TV shows mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I've done and we've got we've, we've grown exponentially in 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 the the two and a half years three years that we've been open um, we have six shows now uh, we have, so we have six shows um, the one that you know was the scariest one and the scariest moment in the company is like we have a travel production company oh great COVID hits travel shuts yeah. down what do you do right and that's when uh the idea came uh to what's wide open vacation rentals mm -hmm. and i was like oh well what would we do i'm like well why not just go around and show the world the most amazing vacation rentals because that's apparently a wide open in COVID for some reason right um and so that started staycation okay um and staycation is in season two now season one did really well awesome um and now we're in season two and I just got back from Scottsdale and Austin and Cabo and going to Miami and Greece. And like, I, I, I'm so fortunate to be able to say I live the dream that I've always built. I've always wanted to build. Yeah. Um, but here's the funny thing. It's not all rainbow and sunshines. Like it is crazy hard work. And you know, it's always what I say, the Instagram versus reality. The reality is, 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 I do get to travel the world. I do get to live the dream, but I work my butt off mm -hmm. with people who all believe in the same concept. And um, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. The company is growing, and uh, we're going to go off to Dallas. I'm most likely moving. I know. That's what you told me recently. Yeah, so we're going to open up an office in Dallas in January. Mm -hmm. And I'm good. You know, I'm at that place where I'm ready for whatever God has 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 next for me, and that's yeah. It. yeah. Well, congratulations, Thank season you. two. I know you've got a couple Emmys under your belt now, as well as a best-selling book on Amazon mm -hmm. called "Making It." Mm -hmm. So be sure to check that out, you guys, if you haven't already. I remember posting about it. I went to your book launch. You did. I yeah. did. I, I will admit I am terrible with reading, so mm -hmm. I have not read all of it yet. Well, it's mostly just a coloring book. Um, so <laughs> if you can stay in the lines, you're good. Perfect. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 really cool. It's, it's part of what I, I hope that I can do in the future is my kind of new passion is that I really want to be of service and really help young kids understand how tough it is to be an artist to mm -hmm. really help them mentally get through it and that's what the book was kind of for it was to understand like look this is this is hard this industry is hard yeah oh being my a god creative is hard being an throat. entrepreneur is hard yeah and how I do know. you survive it i know i watch brock do it every day with his it's, startup it's not easy no and 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 as you know firsthand with brock it probably is terrifying at times yeah like when things don't work and i remember just the dinner we went to the other day he was asking me questions like oh i didn't think about that and think about this and it's it's just parlaying with people who you know who think like you and want to see you succeed and it's tough mm -hmm. but, but you can do it if you if you put the work in yeah definitely how do you think your love languages have changed in the last five years because I feel like 
you're definitely better expressing yourself, but I feel like certain priorities and things have shifted in your life as well. Mm -hmm. Still physical touches top for me. I'm Italian. I just want to have my person leaning, touching, holding, <laughs> kissing. I've trained my dog to be next to my hip at all times. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, quality time is a huge one. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one I think, which was really funny is I used to always think it was gifts. Yeah. I used to always think gift receiving gifts was how I, I received love. And then I kind of figured out it really isn't the gifts that I loved. It was someone it was the concept of someone thinking about me without me having to say it that says, Hey, I know you want this, I know you like this, here you go. Yeah. And that was more of a validation of um you know, so so it gifts it, it just changed. It changed because I understood what the actual reason behind it was. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just meant that that person was showing me through action that they care. Yeah. Because I receive that way better than words or receive it, you know, differently. So, yeah, words scare you. Yeah, I think words scared me for a long time, mm -hmm. for sure, because um, I wasn't able to say the words back. Mm -hmm. I was afraid to say words. If I said words, oh, it's real. But here's a song about how much I love you. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so weird how we process and operate yeah. over, over stuff. And, 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 you know, whatever. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. All right. couple fan questions to wrap this up. Your fans? Yeah. Yeah. My fans. I, don't I mean, any, maybe, I don't have any fans. Maybe one of couple, the 100,000 people who still follow you. No fans. Just family members at this point. E. Ortiz Brown. What happened to the divorce closet? Remember that? I forgot about that until this person asked. Honestly, I still think it's a, an amazing idea in the sense that so many people get divorced. And I know specifically from my dad being a lawyer, everybody, the biggest issue in divorce is where the money goes. How does it get split? How is it functioning in that way? Everybody's fighting over it, this, that. If they say, hey, nope, all goes into a pot, 50-50, mm -hmm. give and go. Truth is, it was also, once again, connected to you. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it didn't resonate with me without you to even you know it's one of the things you do in love and like great idea at the time and yeah i moved on and i'm i'm focusing all my energy on the company for sure a lock has he beaten his self-made tv mounting record time the people deserve answers I have you have you how many tvs have you hung up since that one a plethora <laughs> i think i've i think i now am the people call and sadly if, if there's a TV that needs to be hung up at any of my friends' houses, unfortunately, it's like, you know, it's the guy with the truck. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy, if you have a TV, you're calling me now, whether yeah. you like it or not. And so I'm, uh, it is so fun. I should really have a, have a TV hanging company at this point. Right. Okay. Ariana and several people wanted to know this. Our Ariana? Our you're, Ariana. Our, you're Ariana. Ariana Maddox, 252525. Yeah. She wanted to know this. And many other people wanted to know. They said, oh, my God, all the questions, but priority. Why is he on the Vanderpump Rules cameo? If you hated the show so much, then why on cameo are you a cast member from Vanderpump Rules? I think when I signed up for cameo, which that was a, lot, that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the last time I did a cameo. Maybe a little, but um, I think that was operating out of ego. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was operating at an ego and operating at a time where I was like, yeah, okay, that's what I did. That's what people are going to recognize me. Tru truthfully, as much as I've done in this industry, yeah, as much as I've done and as much work as I've done, that's still one of the main things that um, people know me for. Mm -hmm. There's no ego to that. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. let's, just that, let's be real with that. Um, so I think part of it, I was operating out of ego by putting that on there, but also out of just basic, th let's be real. That is what it is. That's how people do recognize me from. Um, yeah. But I think the original purpose was because I was like, oh, yep, that's it. That's how you know me from it because of this. That's well, how people request me. People will do it for me. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That is your question. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, kind of. Two more. Mm -hmm. You always said that you knew since you were little how you were going to propose to someone. Has that changed in the last several years of your life since you've been through relationships, heartbreak, and now therapy? Mm. You don't have to say how, but I have always wondered. I hope not. 
I hope not. I've always wanted to that way. It's so crazy in my my last relationship, but I had so many pieces of it in motion. And and I think I have to get past uh, that concept of associating that idea with another human. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I don't. I hope it hasn't changed. Yeah, it's such a cool thing. Will you tell me what it is off the podcast? Thousand percent. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm always like, what is this grand well, no, idea that he's no, wanted it's, to it's, do since he was a kid? I mean, now that's so built up. Yeah, it, it's that. I mean, no, I mean, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. That, that's, All right, so we've got two off podcast stories that I'll talk about on next week's podcast. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, last question. What is next for Mr. Robert Glenn Anthony Parks Valletta? Is that mm. your full name? Yeah, Robert Glenn Anthony wow, Parks Valletta. Oh, I got it. I'm proud of it. After all these years. Yeah. What's next? What's next? <sighs> Only God knows. I day to day. Okay. Truly, it's it's day to day. I am. Uh, I think I have a very clear vision of of what I want, and I'm going after it. Mm-hmm. I do this really funny thing. So on my phone. Um, and I highly recommend this to anybody who is, is looking to make a shift in anything personally or professionally. Um, I wrote down 10 things I'm going to accomplish over the year. Oh, I love that. And six of them are on the, on mine. I did 12, but normally I say 10 cause 10 is more than enough for everybody. Right. Um, and I did this last year. I did this the year after like me and my ex broke up. Um, and I said, I'm going to accomplish these things. One was write a book. One was get this company to go here. One was to do this. And, and I knocked all of them out in six months. Wow. And, and, and I realized, I was like, you write them down and it's in your face every day. Mm-hmm. And it's on your screensaver. And so it's one of these things that if you don't do it, you know it's because of you. Yeah. And so I have my list for, for next year. Um, What's on that list? Give us a couple. So, <clears throat> one, um, be proud of the man you are and pray. Mm-hmm. And that's just a daily reminder to c- continuously like the person you are. And I know that sounds silly. That's like a self-help thing that I would, you know, whatever. Um, be a powerful leader in the company and, and um, with youth. Um, write a fiction book. Okay. And I already have the book teed up. Like science fiction or just like a fiction story? I have the whole story. Oh. It's actually a good one. Okay. And, I, and the concept is I want to write a book and then maybe make a movie out of it. Yeah. But, uh, I want to write a fiction book. I have it all dialed in. It's, oh, it's creepy. Oh. It's good. Okay. Um, Stay tuned. Buy another home. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I sold my old house, um, bounced around. But find home and buy another home, and I'm going to do that next year. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to get put in a position where I'm just going to be like, okay, this is where I'm going to be. Um, <clears throat> I have another one, which is find a new hobby. <laughs> um, and it was salsa. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, salsa. Um, and then I have business stuff. Um, raise X amount of capital for our company to grow into having three different offices. Um help each business partner achieve one goal in their own personal life. Uh, you know, things like that. You know, I, I think it's interesting how you make them tangible though, and you can make it functional. Like writing a book is a goal. You go do it, you know, say, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. Okay. Don't say I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. Say, Hey, I'm going to put myself at 13% body fat. Yeah. A tangible goal that is realistic that you can achieve in a realistic time. Like someone's like, I'm going to be at 5% body fat. That's not tangible. It's not realistic. Like it's mm-hmm. real. Like, you're your own worst enemy, and by doing something every single day in order to get to your goals, the only way you're going to do it. And so many self-help coaches and this are always like preaching the same thing, like just get up and go freaking do it. Yeah, just for do sure. It. So, um, that's some of mine. But uh, that's what's next. Love what's it. next for Sheena? You know, day by day, I guess. Same. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'm looking forward to 2023 and just showing up for my daughter every day, being the best version of myself and making her proud. That is my number one priority. So how has that changed you? How has having a child 
changed how you see life and how you see how you operate day to day? I feel like it's definitely made me a more anxious person. I felt like when I was starting to get my anxiety underway, then I had a miscarriage and then I got off my anxiety medication and then I have a baby who I have to worry about keeping alive every single day. So it is a very scary job. It is not chill parenting whatsoever, at least for me. Mm-hmm. But I think it has made me be more accountable, more responsible, even though I already have been a very responsible person my whole life. I think I'm now forced. I have this tiny little human who forces me to show up every single day, no matter what I'm going through. She doesn't yeah. care if I'm hungover. No. She doesn't care if I'm tired. She like. I like she, how the first one you said was hungover. Because, because kids <laughs> don't care if you're no, hungover. They don't. Oh, no, that's the worst. No, yeah. no not at all. They still yeah. want to play. Yeah. And I still rarely, I don't yeah. even really get hungover. But Brock the other day, oh, it was a struggle. But I think just, you know, being the best version of myself. And next year, I really want to be better at just focusing on my work and building things that she's going to be proud of. And what's and what is next for work? I mean, hopefully a season 11, you know, this crazy show, this ride I have been on with Bravo and Vanderpump Rules for over a decade now. I'm not ready for it to end every year. I think it's going to be the last year. I think that's realistic at this point, you know, treat every season like it's your last. But then we just one up ourselves again. And it's like season 10, which is going to be airing soon. It set up a really good season 11. So hopefully that's next. I as you also know, my dream has always been to host a travel show. That mm-hmm. is something I would still love to do. I would love to do a family travel show. I would love to have Summer be a part of traveling with me. I want her to travel the world. That was one thing. I never left the country until I was in my 30s. So I want her to have a different upbringing that I can now provide her that I didn't have. And I never missed out on anything. Yeah. I was happy going to have a zoo every summer. That was my vacation. But I want her to experience the world and especially having a dad from another country. I want her to have that culture growing up. I do have an idea. Oh, okay. Stay tuned. Stay stay tuned. I think it could be, I think it'd be very challenging for you though. Okay. Well, I'm up for the the travel show. I know. I know. Traveling and especially when you're a parent traveling, it is challenging. Just going to Vegas is challenging. I mean, imagine if we did a show where you and the family traveled. With no technology. <gasps> Can she just stay off of her phone? For Look, if I have my family there, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, just but can you survive without service? We'll see. Um, Stay tuned. No, but yeah, no, it's, I, yeah. I, know, I got some things we're good. Yeah. You're going to get it. Yeah, but thank you for being here. Thank you for breaking my heart. Thank you for this new friendship that we have. And I look forward to seeing everything your company accomplishes. You guys watch Staycation. We got season two. Rob's book is available for purchase on Amazon. It is called Making It. Anything else? Nope. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back next week.